Praise the Lord. May the spirit of the living God of all creation give you ears to hear. May he empower you to take full delight in him so that he will strengthen you in every area of weaknesses in this life. May the spirit of the living God be fully active in your life so that you will know the truth and that the truth will set you free. I am Brother Joseph Herbert. I want to get on here and talk about the praises of the Lord, how we as sons of God, we praise the Lord every day because he is first. We seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness so that all things, that all the blessings of God, all the um, provision of God for the sons of God will be active on our life, on our lives. And so you are, you are created for a purpose. You are created for the glory of God. You and I are made in God's image and his likeness. And that's why the devil hates us. That's why the world who behaves himself like the wicked one hates us, hates the sons of God, hates holiness and righteousness. They don't fear God. We fear the Lord in high reverence. And when we fear God, wisdom begins. We hate evil, forwardness of mouth. We despise uh, sin. We hate sin, just like the Lord. The Lord hates sin, so sin was punished 2,000 years ago. On the cross, the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus Christ, the word of God, that was made flesh and dwelt among us became human and he died for us and one of the scriptures that I forgot to mention in my last video is in 2 Corinthians verse 2 Corinthians chapter uh chapter 5 verse 21 says for he has made him to be sin it's talking about the father and uh made the son Jesus Christ for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So what does that mean? The ultimate sacrifice. Jesus Christ was born from purity, a virgin. God manifested in the flesh, dwelt among us. The word was made flesh, dwelt among us. The meat, his meat was to do the will of the Father, and he has done so. He obeyed the Father perfectly, and he is the example of whom we shall follow. We are to follow him with full diligence. Diligence meaning strong effort. We put forth the effort to obey what he says. God will uh, guide us into all truth and his the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, Jesus Christ calls it the Comforter, is to guide us into all truth. His divine power, his divine role is to guide us into all truth. And all truth is found in the very written Word of God. All scripture from Genesis to Revelation is God breathed, is inspired by God, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instructions in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. You and I are created for a purpose, and so the praises of the Lord is the strength of the sons. The Lord, Nehemiah chapter 8 says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. We are to take full delight in the Lord. Now, one example of the word of God says in Hebrews chapter 11, the very first verse, it says, faith is the substance of the evidence hoped for and the things not seen. So our faith is supposed to be solidified in Jesus Christ, who is the true vine, who is the root of the offspring of David. He, he, he is the chief shepherd. Our faith is the substance of the evidence not seen. So one of the things is we honor God when we 
Seek him every day. Sons of God, seek God Almighty every day. Now, to the unconverted, to the unbeliever, they're not going to understand why you should seek God. But yet, their lives are reckless. Their lives, there's an area of missing uh, components of the heart. Co missing components. There are things missing in their life. And that is Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate. He is the perfection of God. And we are called to go on to perfection. So, I was going to mention that um, I had an encounter today. Spoke to a a man that uh, who I I ministered to. That God gave me the grace to minister to this person, and so uh, I didn't minister to right away when I first got to this job that I work at now. Uh, but he saw me reading my word, my Bible, in one of the in one of the places of the warehouse when there was a lot of downtime and I was reading the Bible, feeding on the word of God, feeding on the spiritual fruit of righteousness. And he, and he said, he, he came to me and says, uh, that's good, man. Um, I honor that you go to church. I forgot how the conversation went, but basically he says he start, he needs to go back to church. He needs to get back into church. And, and I noticed that there are, and for some, now when I say this, when I say this to the, whoever is not converted will not understand what I'm about to say. He has idols in his life and those idols is sports. He's a, he's a coach for football and basketball and he, he there, there are idols in his life. There are idols in his life. And why I say that? Because Competition is not of the Lord. Competition is rooted in the devil. And you may say, Brother Joseph, you sound like a legalist. No, the truth of the matter is that's what happened in heaven. That's what happened with Lucifer, what was found in the heart of Lucifer pride, wanting to be like the most high God, wanting to be like the God of all creation. He wanted his own kingdom. The Lord curse satan who was once known as lucifer jesus says i saw satan fall to the earth as lightning and so god gave him a kingdom the kingdom of darkness that's why there are devils that's why there are demon spirits that's why there are unclean spirits that are operating in the ungodly that are operating in those who are walking in pride and rebellion those who are walking and the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, which is not of the Father of all creation, but of the flesh. So you have these things. And so, yes, he has idols. The guy has idols in his life. And so today I was ministering to him. And then, you know, I just came to him in gentleness. The, the word of God, the spirit of God, when you walk in the spirit, one of the fruits of the spirit is gentleness. So I came to him, I was asking him, hey man, um, I just want to ask you a question, man. And, and my concern, because the other day I saw him got into it with somebody else, and all kinds of profanity was coming out of his mouth, all kinds of blasphemy, and the carnal language, but yet he said he needs church, he needs to go to church, he needs God, but he, it seems impossible for him to do that. Now the word God does say, the way of the transgressor is hard. And this is a manifestation of that situation for this gentleman. And so I was ministering to him. I said, uh, uh, I asked him a question. Um, yeah, man, um, I wanted to ask you a question, man. Like, now, I'm not trying to sound like being uh, unrighteously judgmental and or, you know, because there is a difference between when folks say, do not judge. They don't mention how to judge or how we should judge. Everybody judges. The word of God says, the, the, do not judge according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So this is my righteous judgment in the gentleness of the Spirit of God. I ask them, seriously, if you were to die, and I'm asking this in love and gentleness, I'm not, a, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, 
and he was listening. If you were to die today, God forbid, if you were to die today, because when, and why I say God forbid, because I know his, the way, the fruit of his, his action or active way of living and what comes out of his mouth every day. God forbid, if you were to die today or in the next few hours, where do you think you will go? And he said, honestly, I think I will go to heaven. I try to do good things. I try to be good to, uh, be nice to everybody, kind to everybody and do good things. So most people in the world, in the earth, uh, the word of God says there is none that does good, no, not one. So most people will proclaim their own righteousness. Most people will consider themselves to be a good person. And, and so I asked him this. I said, okay, so you are now you you consider, I can't remember specifically what I said to him, but to summarize it all up, I asked him, now the Jesus Christ. Oh, this is what I asked him. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I asked him, so do you believe that the Bible, God's written word from Genesis to Revelation is the word of God and that is absolute truth? He said, yes, I was raising it. I was raising the church. And, he, and so I, and I understood about it. I was like, yeah, okay. And so he was telling about how he was raising church. But yet, his lifestyle presented when he's at the job. Again, he did get into it with somebody at the job, and all kind of, again, all kinds of carnality was coming out of his mouth. Jesus says, "Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks." And so, I asked him. Now, this is what Jesus Christ, the Lord, says. Since you say you believe that the Bible is God's word, let me ask you this, and this is very serious. This serious. All will stand before God and give an account of their life. I said, what do you think of this verse that Jesus Christ, the Lord, says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21? Now this, he was, he was listening attentively. He said, I said, Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter through the, to the kingdom of God, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and in your name done many wonders and in your name cast out devils? Then I will declare to you, depart from me. I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness or you who practice iniquity. I told him that's the scariest words in all existence because you know what's going to happen after that if he tells you these things. And I gave him a brief testament, testimony, uh, a brief testimony of how I became a Christian. I got saved 13 years ago. Uh, before I was saved, I did bad things. I used language that offended God. I watched things that offended God. God is holy, just, and righteous. I, I used to listen to ungodly music that defiled the temple. The Word of God does say, he who defiles the temple, God will destroy. What does defilement mean, Brother Joseph? It means it's another word for pollution. You pollute the temple of the Lord. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So you have gates to your soul, your eyes and your ears. Jesus says the light of the body is the eye. If your eye be single, then your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye be dark, then your whole body will be full of darkness. Now, what does he mean? He means that if your eye be single and your whole body will be full of light, meaning you focus on Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world who came into the world. He is that true light. And when you believe and focus on his will being done and obey what he says faithfully and striving to enter in, going on to perfection in the confidence of Christ Jesus and by the helper, the comforter, the Holy Ghost, you will be classified as the child of the day, a child of light. But if your eye be dark, meaning you focus on the wrong things, you watch things that defile you, you listen to ungodly music or ungodly things and defile you. Uh, the word of God does says, he who gives heed to false lips is 
uh, I believe it says dangerous. I forgot what it says. It's in Proverbs. But you listen to gossip, you listen to slandering, and you take and you believe a lie. God can give you over. God can do anything he wants to do. But if you choose unrighteousness, there's consequences for it. So I, would, I was telling the gentleman that about the scariest words in all existence, he was listening and he was open to him. And then he began to like pour out. He said, uh, yeah, man, there is there's, all my life has always been something missing. And I said, Jesus Christ is missing out of your life. If you commit your mind, if you commit your heart and life to God, through Jesus Christ, he will save you and grant you everlasting life. And, and he's, he had to go because, we're again, we're at work. And he said he had to get to work, but he, want, he wanted to talk more. And, I, and uh, as I was walking off, I was praising God, praising the Lord, because the Lord inhabits the praises of the sons of God. And that's what it says in Psalm 22. So God gets honor when you minister the word of God. When you are, whether you're online, whether you're in a pulpit, whether you're on the streets or evangelizing, however God guides you by his spirit and preach the word of God, the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is called the spirit of prophecy. God is in the work. And if you commit your works to the Lord, your thoughts will be established. And that's Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. So you praise God with the works of the, of the Holy Ghost. You surrender your life to the work of the Holy Ghost. Surrender your mind to the work of the Holy Ghost. Surrender your heart, your heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And this is an everyday process, an everyday growing process in Christ Jesus. For the believer, for the converted, <coughs> to those who are born again. And so, the, the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. So again, like I mentioned in most of my videos Seeking first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness in every day. You seek him first. He is known. He should be known as your first love. And Jesus said that in Revelation. The resurrected Jesus said that. <coughs> excuse me. In Revelation chapter one. No, I'm sorry. Verse uh, chapter two. When he was rebuking the church of Ephesus. Let me turn it real fast because. As a born again, chosen vessel of the Lord, you have a first love. You have a first love in whom you should honor, in whom you should take full delight in, and you praise him. The Lord Jesus Christ is worthy of praise. He's worthy of honor. Now, Revelation chapter 2 says this. Now, John, John did saw he was on the island of Patmos and in the spirit on the Lord's day. And this is what the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ tells the angel of the church to write, uh, for John to write these things. He's, and in verse one of chapter two, unto the angel of the church in Ephesus, write these things says, he that holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know your works and your labor and your patience and how you cannot bear them which are evil and you have tried them which say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars. Now it sounds like uh, this church, which is, I forgot what kind of church. Well, the in another translation Bible, I used to, I was raised in the faith of reading the New King James Version, but now I just read strict, uh, not strictly, but strict King James. Yeah, I might as well say strictly, yeah. Strictly King James. So the church of Ephesus is known as the loveless church. Why it's called the loveless church? Because they lost their first love. And a Christian can be in position of losing their first love. They can get all trapped. They can get distracted. We can get distracted. We can get um, 
thrown or caught off guard by the cares of this life, by the devices of the devil, and the conditions of our heart that we don't want to let things go. And so, yes, so the church of Ephesus, I'm going to read verse 2 again in Revelation chapter 2. It says, Jesus says, I know your works and your labor and your patience and how you cannot bear them which are evil, and you have tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars, and have borne and have patience, and for my name's sake have labored and have not fainted. Now, they sell, it sounds like they're doing a good job in the kingdom. And so, just likewise for the Christian, it may, it may seem like you're doing a good job, but guess what? The Lord sees everything what's going on in your heart. Just like he told the rich and ruler, there's one thing that you lack. Now, here's the one thing that they lack. It says, in verse, Jesus says in verse 4, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you because you have left your first love. And now, why did he say first love? Because for one, who is who should be first in your life when you open your eyes? You give God the praise and honor. He's worthy of it. He, it. he should be your first love. To love the Lord, your God, with all of your mind, with all of your heart, with all of your soul and strength, with all of your might. He's first. So what do you do in the act of that? You get into his presence and begin your day with the Lord, who is your first love. Everything else is secondary. And so the church of Ephesus, Jesus found, he says, nevertheless, I have someone against you. This is what will be, would be against you if you are positioned as losing your first love. Jesus Christ is your first love. The Lord God of all creation is your first love. Remember, he, now here's the encouragement. He, he reassures them. He says this. Remember, therefore, from where you are fallen and repent and do the first works or else or else I will come to you quickly and will remove your candlestick out of this place, except you repent, meaning a change of mind, a change of direction in your thinking and your heart's desire towards God in Christ. Then he will restore you. It is. It doesn't say that right here, but. God is first. He's your first love. He is worthy of the praise. He's worthy of honoring. He should be honored. Hebrews chapter 11. Faith is the evidence of the things hoped for and not for the things, not for the things are, is the substance of the things hoped for and, not, and the evidence of the things not seen. That's what it says. So, the, your faith towards God, your trust towards God should be as if you trust a parachute. As if you trust, a, you're, on a, on, you're on a plane, you're higher than 50,000 feet above the earth, and the plane goes out, the engine goes out, and you have a parachute to rely on. You are to, you, you got no choice but to trust a parachute or just jump out the plane with nothing and just die. You are to trust the Lord as if you would trust a parachute. So Jesus says, but this you have that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Now, the word of God doesn't describe the Nicolaitans, but it sounds like some false religious group or false religion of those who don't obey the will of God or reject the will of God. So whatever false religion, whatever mindset that is contrary to the will of God. He hates it. The Lord is greatly to be feared. Proverbs 8.13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, the evil way, and the forward mouth I hate. So, but this you have that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, to him that overcomes will I give to eat, of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So what is my point in Revelation chapter 2? So God is worthy of the praise. He's worthy of focus. He's worthy of honor. He's first in your life. 
If you are truly a son of God, if you are truly a king and a priest, if you are truly born again and God wants to bless your life. Now, Psalm 22 is what I, uh, what, what I talked about in my last two videos. So th these are the things that are, are key components to honoring God first in your life. It says in verse 3, uh, Psalm 22, it says, But you are holy, O you that inhabited the praises of Israel. What does he mean by that? The Lord lives in the praises of the sons of God. The Lord resides in the praises of the sons of God. How does he do that? Your, your worship is done in spirit and in truth. Because God is spirit. You worship him in spirit and in truth. Whether it's praying to him, whether it's worshiping him in, in dance or singing unto him, whether it's meditating on his word day and night, the promises of God, you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season and his leaf also will not wither whatsoever he does. He will prosper. That's the promises of God when you obey. And God is living in you. Jesus says in John chapter 15, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done so. By this or henceforth, my father is glorified that you'll bear much fruit so you will be my disciple. Now, are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? If you are a son, you are also a disciple. What is a disciple, Brother Joseph? A disciple is one who is disciplined to the work of Christ. One who is disciplined and learning and necessary edification of Christ Jesus. So that you go on to perfection. So yes, you praise the Lord. Now, uh, one of the myths, I was in the Bible study last night and... One of the encouragement of that my pastor mentioned uh, was the praises of the Lord. Praise, what I, what I was thinking of, praise is, praising the Lord is a weapon. Why do I say that? Isaiah 61 says this. Let me turn it real fast. Isaiah chapter 61 says this. Why, why the reason I say I, uh, praises is? The praises is a weapon because it confuses the enemy. Now it says in verse 3, let me see. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. Matter of fact, to get the context, let me start and read verse 1 to verse 3. Now this has to make sense if you are a son of God. Praises to the Lord is a weapon. You don't allow the devil, you don't allow the deception of the heart or you don't allow the world and their persuasion under, under the wicked one to affect who you are in Jesus. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach glad tidings or good tidings to the meek. He that sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Now, the spirit of God, this is what the Holy Ghost and the sons do in, on the inside when you delight yourself in them. Verse three says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes and uh, the oil of joy for mourning. The garment, there it is, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. What is the spirit of heaviness? What you allow sadness. Let's uh, just say you, you're on your way to church and you get into an argument with a friend or a loved one or your spouse and you're on your way to church. You, you have to be positioned and ready to worship God. I mean, that's how we are supposed to be in the house of God. You go, you have an argument or a, or a disagreement, and then you go to church. You don't feel like pressing in. You don't, and, and devils, demon spirits see that. 
your heart is, if you don't deal with the issue, if you don't confront what's in your heart, if you don't pull down thoughts by the word of God, by taking it captive and bringing it to the obedience of Jesus Christ, the devil and his angels will have a field day with you. Your flesh will have a field day with you. Your heart will. Well, it, the word of God says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Lord. If you don't deal with the issues of your heart and close the door, ask the Lord to close the door and give the, the God of heaven praise, you will rebuke the spirit of heaviness. You can rebuke the spirit of heaviness by praising the Lord, jumping from joy. The word of God says in Nehemiah chapter 8, I forget which verse, but the joy of the Lord is his is your strength. Jesus says in John chapter 15, as the Father loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things that I have said to you, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy may be full. So understand the joy of the Lord the delight of the Lord, you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart so you don't have space for the for heaviness or sorrow or anger or frustration or or the sins of the flesh, the works of the flesh. No, you don't give no place to those things. You give place to the Holy Ghost to work in you perfection and holiness because that's the will of God for your life. So, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. That is describing life in the Lord, holiness unto the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 puts it like this. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have been passed away. Behold, all things become new. You have newness of life to walk in Jesus and you walk in it. In the joy of him, you boast in the Lord. Paul, by the Spirit, says in 2 Corinthians, you, you praise the Lord, praise the Lord. The garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness. So when you overcome, you, 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 you are not giving place to the devil. You are, pray, you are made to praise God. You are made to you are created to praise the Lord. He inhabits your praise if you are a son. You praise him. You don't, if you are feeling down or sorrow, you plead the blood of Jesus. But you also, you don't bypass, you don't be passive with it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. No, praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is God. Praise you, Holy Father, in spirit and truth. I praise you. I bless your name. You take delight in the Lord. Psalm 37 says this. Delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. Now, he's not talking about carnal desires, but the desires that are lined up with God's will. Are aligned up with the will of God for your life. So, he wants to prosper you. The Holy Ghost, the Lord God wants to prosper you. All these things will be added when you seek him first, the kingdom of God. And so, yes, the promises back to Psalm 22. But you are holy, O you that inhabit the praises of Israel. And he says some other interesting things in this chapter. Um, again, Psalm 22 is very prophetic because it's prophesying about Jesus Christ and his uh, walk unto the crucifixion, uh, because it mentions some things. Uh, what verse is that? Uh, verse 16. In fact, verse 15. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt, and my tongue cleaves to my jaws, and you have brought me into dust of death. David is, now David wrote Psalm 22. And it says, for dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierce my hands and my feet. Now, what does that sound like? Jesus Christ, who gave his life as a ransom for many, who took our punishment that we all rightly deserve. He was beaten with many stripes, wounded for our transgressions and, and chastened by our peace that was laid on him. 
Our peace was worldly peace because Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. Now, only peace that Jesus gives is for the sons, and we take delight in that. But the chastisement of our peace was on Christ. And again, I read, let me read that again. Second Corinthians, the last verse in chapter 5, it says, and I had quoted it earlier in this video. Second, that's first Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 5. The last verse it says, matter of fact, let me read verse 20. Now then, this is the Apostle Paul, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As, <clears throat> excuse me. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God, for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So, you need reconciliation. Now, Paul talked about that in Romans chapter 5, I believe, or chapter 4, one of those two chapters. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, reconciliation to the Father. You are born in this world. God made you for a purpose. Uh, I believe it's Psalm 51 that it's, David said that we was born into sin and shaping in iniquity. So you was born because of the curse of man, the fall of man from the beginning. You were born with a sinful nature to reject God, to think contrary to the will of God, to walk contrary to the will of God. And you must be born again. Now, if you're a child, uh, there, you have children and you both, that has both parents that are Christian, praise be the Lord, that's the will of God. We are to train our children in the way they should go. But not everybody has been born in a Christian household. And I am one of them. So you were born into sin. You proclaim your own righteousness. You think you are a good person. And, and you compare your statutes. You cannot compare your goodness to God's goodness because that word good means moral perfection. And you and I and the world would use this as an excuse that nobody's perfect. It's true to some degree, but that's a lie because Jesus Christ is perfect. The word, I just read 2 Corinthians, uh, the last verse on chapter 5, who, who, was, who knew no sin. No deceit was ever found in his mouth. He became sin for us on the tree. So he, he became a curse on the tree because of his perfection. And it was the will of God. It was the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice. The father poured out his wrath, his holy indignation on his only begotten son. So that we can have everlasting life. The cross was... The penalty for our sin, the innocent, betrayed blood of Jesus Christ was shed for us. And we declare that the sons of God declared the blood of Jesus over our lives as a declaration over sin, as we are made right with the Father. Now, reconciliation, you need that the, apart from Jesus Christ. Again, I, as I make mention, I'm going to get off track, but... You're born with a sinful nature. You have the mindset and the heart to sin against God, to watch what you don't want to watch, to partake in events and places and things that you do, <coughs> that God despises. You have uh, hobbies or habits that are very grievous to the Holy Ghost. And... You must be born again. Jesus says, except the man be born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. And so you must be born again. You, you're like a criminal standing before a judge guilty of multiple crimes. And a good judge will give the criminal what the criminal deserves. Now he can set a fine to $10 million to pay or life in prison and 
the person, the criminal, has no way to pay for this crime, these multiple crimes. He may have committed uh, robbing a bank, stolen a few cars here and there, uh, murder, and a bunch of other crimes that he has got caught by the law. And now he's standing before a judge. The person doesn't have $10 million to pay. None of his family members, none of his friends, or, or I would say, what? Partners in crime has nothing, no, not $10 million to pay. So the judge is getting ready to sentence this criminal to life in prison because this person cannot pay the fine. You and I, apart from Jesus Christ, apart from being a Christian, being born again, being redeemed by the blood, apart from that, you are, your crimes, your sins against God, you have to pay for that. The word of God says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is through eternal life in Christ Jesus. So you have a crime to pay. You're gonna, you don't know when you're going to die. You don't know when your last breath is. And if you die without being transformed by the Spirit of God that is in Christ and the Father, you're going to have a horrific, to the ultimate degree, to pay the, the, the crime against God, the crimes against God, your sin. If you have lied, you have bared false witness against a God of holiness, a God of truth, if you have coveted, meaning you wrongfully desired someone or something, you have sinned against God. If you have dishonored your parents and never apologized or never was honorable before your parents, you are you sinned against God. If you have idols in your life, like again, like I mentioned that uh, individual who I ministered today, the idols was his, in his life was competition of sports and football. He, the... The world loves football. The world loves basketball. The world loves the NBA and the sports entertainment and the UFC and the, all these other uh, things that can defile you and provoke pride in the heart. And so you have these things in your heart before a God who sees all things naked. All things are naked before the God of all creation can hide from him. You can't justify your actions and say that you are a good person, but when you stand before a God who is holy, righteous, and just, he's going to judge you of your thoughts, words, and deeds, and you become guilty before a God of all creation, the holy God of all creation, and then there's the punishment, hell, and then the lake of fire. The hope in this life while you're breathing God's air in your lungs is that the hope is Jesus Christ, the God of all creation, the coming of the just one, the alpha and the omega, the first and the last, who is, who was, and who is to come, the almighty Jesus Christ. He died for you and I. He paid for the crimes that you and I committed before God Almighty. And when you believe, when you repent and change your mind, change your thinking, and turn to God for righteousness sake, turn and commit to the Lord Jesus Christ, praise his name, worship him in spirit and truth, meditate on his word day and night, and go in a health to a healthy church where you can grow as a tree of righteousness, you will enter into heaven. You will die as a son of God, a king and a priest, a born again Christian. You will enter into heaven and you will spend forever with God. So you are created for a purpose. For, so for the, the criminal that stands before a judge that has committed multiple crimes, did not have $10 million to pay for his crimes, but now he's going to life in prison. Somebody walks in the courtroom, somebody that you never met, somebody that the criminal never met. It says, Your Honor, I've sold all that I have and given all that I, I can give. And because I love this individual right here, this 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 criminal, let's just say his name is Mr. Harris. Uh, 
because I love Mr. Harris. Here's the $10 million check. The judge takes the money off the bench, see that this person is paid his fine. He legally dismisses his case. And now the criminal who is grateful for the person who paid for the fine, paid the fine. It's a picture of what Jesus did for you and I. When you believe and trust in him and commit yourself, commit your mind, heart, and life to God through Jesus Christ. And so you are granted everlasting life. You have to endure to the end, obey, grow as a tree of righteousness, tree a tree that bears the fruit of the righteous, to bear the fruit of the Spirit of God. Love, <coughs> excuse me. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, meekness, faith, patience, and temperance. You walk in the Spirit, and then you live unto holiness in Jesus Christ. So you have to understand you are created for a purpose, you're created for God, you're created for God and His glory, and that. So that you can spend forever with him because he wants you to spend forever with him. He doesn't want you to die in iniquity or let the your iniquity be your ruin because there are consequences, harsh consequences for that decisions in this life when you die. But when you die, but when, when you live for Jesus Christ, obeying him in spirit and in truth, walking in the spirit, growing in the faith, you will spend forever with the Lord Jesus Christ and your heart is you're going to be a brand new person. He is going to give you brand new bodies, glorified bodies that glorifies God and honors him day and night. So that's why it's very important to praise him while you are here on the earth. Not because you're, that you need to, because you do need to, but your desire will be for that, to praise the Lord, to take delight in the Lord. He inhabits the praises of his people. He will. He lives in your praises. He lives in your worship for those who honor him in spirit and in truth. And so, again, that Hebrews chapter 11, faith is the substance of the things hoped for, not the evidence of the, the evidence of things not seen. So the word of God says in Proverbs chapter 3, I forget which verse, but it says, to honor the Lord with all of your substance. Faith is a substance. You honor the Lord with your faith. That's putting God first. That's seeking him first. Honor the Lord with all of your substance and with the first fruits of your increase. You are a tree to bear the fruit of righteousness. The first fruits of your increase so that your barns may be plenty and your presses will burst out with new wine. And so Jesus gives the sons of God the new wine, that's the blood of Jesus, the purification of his spirit and his blood his, that was innocent and betrayed to wash you and cleanse you when you seek him in his presence. He wants to bless your life. He wants to give you everlasting life, life eternal through him. And when you praise him, you are made new every day. You are a creature in Christ Jesus. Let your calling and election sh be sure, examine yourself to see that you are in the faith because Jesus Christ is holy and righteous and true. You must be born again. I am Brother Joseph Herbert. This is for his glory.